Tom, Cindy, and I will just talk a little bit about why we took on the project, how it's being done, and, and the intended impact. There are a mul multitude of reasons that lead organizations to prepare an inventory of, of their greenhouse gas emissions, many of which have been noted throughout today. There are a few reasons that are somewhat notable for us. Government ownership of the major utilities in Saskatchewan means that there tends to be an expectation that our companies implement best practices around environmental issues. It's important that we can make credible claims to our customers, voters, and environmental activists around the Crown sector's impact on Saskatchewan's total emissions and our efforts to manage and reduce. Mandatory reporting is already a reality for some Crowns. Reporting emissions is a requirement of the Government of Canada for large emitters, including SAS Power and SAS Energy. We want to voluntarily apply similar standards to all of our Crowns to pursue, pursue environmental responsibility, to be prepared for reporting if and when it becomes a requirement for smaller emitters, and to do our part to help Saskatchewan reach the emission reduction targets. The Government of Saskatchewan, um, including the Crown Corporations, um, selected the Climate Registry, which you've heard a little bit about today, as a tool that we'll be using to calculate our emissions. So how we did it is uh, we followed the typical steps in the greenhouse gas inventory. We uh, first gathered three sets of information and then we crunched some numbers. We defined boundaries, what was in and what was out. We determined our activity data, how many cubic meters of natural gas, kilowatt hours, electricity, etc. Uh, we sourced emission factors, basically, the uh, greenhouse gas emissions per cubic meter of natural gas per kilowatt hour, etc. And then, as I stated, we crunched numbers. So in more detail, we defined our boundaries, and that required two levels of thought. With each crown, we had to look at the organizational structure and look at their, some of them have many subsidiaries, uh, all of them have the parent of CIC, and some of them have some partners. So we had to follow a set of rules as defined by the Climate Registry to um, define whether or not we include those subsidiaries. The next level of thought was operational boundaries, where we had to determine if we had operational control of, say, SaskTel's fleet, has complete, they have complete operational control of their fleet, um, a factory, a um, office building, etc. So we went through a, a bit of an exercise with each crown with that. This has already been mentioned today, but the Climate Registry, or the protocol that we followed, made it mandatory for us to report all direct emissions uh, with our crowns, um, also report all scope to indirect energy emissions, and finally the whole gamut of scope 3 indirect other emissions, the upstream and downstream costs and emissions, um, were optional. And in most cases, most Crown operations were big enough that Scope 1 and Scope 2 were enough to keep us busy. Um, we had two small Crowns. One was tracking their business air travel, for instance, um, for other reasons, so we included that in. Another one who, who incurs a lot of paper usage was actually tracking their paper usage. So we estimated the upstream and downstream emissions from that. Other than that, it was all Scope 1 and all Scope 2. So after we defined our boundaries, we collected the activity data within those boundaries. Again, cubic meters of dental gas, kilowatt hours, electricity, uh, pounds of paper in some cases, and liters of fuel. Uh, we got that information, we analyzed it. There's of course a lot of errors, a lot of data checking, a lot of bulk data to go through with these large operations. Uh, we found that a lot of information was sourced from facilities and maintenance people. Uh, we had some people get on roofs and check out refrigeration units. Um, and accounting got involved quite often with utility bills. 